So that's why you have to decide whether you want to be seen as a car salesperson or a repair person in your business. Now, quick question for you. When I say repair person or car salesperson, what do you think of? What words pop into your head? Honest, hardworking, hustler, chancer, sleazy. So these are the words that you may be thinking about, but who did you label with which words? Hey, I'm Richard Butler, Director of Education here at PLR.me. And I was thinking about you and your business the other day as, well, something really interesting happened to us. You see, we've had a leaky tap in the house for a while. In fact, we've had two, one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. And you know, it's one of those things that you keep saying, yeah, we'll get it done tomorrow, we'll ring tomorrow, we'll, we'll fix it tomorrow. Now hold on, let me stop you right there in your tracks as you're probably thinking, Hey Rich, you're so awesome. Can't you repair the tap? Now, while my skills may include amazing Irish voice, good looks, great cooking skills, and of course, humor. Unfortunately, DIY is not one of them. In fact, I could tell you the story about the IKEA bookcase and the screwdriver, but I digress, and that's a whole other video. You see, we decided to take advantage of our insurance and get the kitchen tap repaired, because in our insurance policy, we get three hours of DIY work a year, which for me is fine, because I don't want to do it. <laughs> And then this guy comes out and you know, he looked at the business. He had overalls, he had oily colored hands, smell to smoke. You know, this guy was an authentic repairman. Even down to the long pause he made while he surveyed the work that had to be done. Now, you know how they are. They kind of look around and they scratch their head and they look around again and then they go, oof. It's as, as if they are setting you up to say, this is gonna be costly. But you see, what happened next, I didn't expect. And it meant he blew any chance of getting our business. But more on that later. Now comes the second part of the story, the car salesman. You see, we're in the market for a new car as our current little Seat is nearly 21 years old. Yeah, it's getting the keys to the house this year. And while it goes like a rocket, the emission levels are too high. So we can't drive it. Or at least that's what they are saying. You know, those who are trying to control us and our, and our use of the car. Oh, oh sorry, uh, oh, wrong, wrong video. This is not the conspiracy theory channel video. Okay, okay, let's get back to where we were. So we go to our local car showroom to see, well, what they have to offer. After all, we heard that a car that we liked was coming in at just 14 and a half thousand euros, which was not a bad price. Now, when I think of a car salesperson, I think dodgy looking bloke, you know, wearing a cashmere camel colored coat and with a British East London accent saying, I've got a great deal for you, love. Beautiful motor, one lady driver, won't give you any problems. Well, you know, I think the only thing dodgy about that was the East London accent, but you know, I try. Well, anyway, let's get back to the story. So let's introduce Jose Ramon, who sat us down. He was in his 50s, casually dressed, listened to us, chit-chatted, showed us the demo car in the showroom and allowed us to experience the car. Turn it on, press the buttons. Oh man, a touch screen and buttons and I was sold. And voice navigation. I tell you, I was sold. Then he impressed us. You see, we needed to know the dimensions of the new car as parking spaces in Barcelona are tiny. I mean, seriously tiny, like super tiny, okay? And he knew right away the dimensions of our current nearly 21 year old car down to the last millimeter. So this guy knew his stuff. Then he did something that really changed my mind. So let me summarize for a second. Up to this point, we have a typical looking repairman doing the typical repairman things when they come out to survey the issue. Then we have a pretty normal guy who just happens to sell cars, who took time to explain everything to us, to experience the car, etc., and to chit chat a little bit, which is really, really nice. But as I said, both did something that changed our outlook. You see, the repairman said to us, Listen, you can buy the tap from the bathroom via the insurance. 
and it will cost you 120 euros plus taxes. What do you know? I have one in the van, which I can let you have just for 60 euros cash. No questions asked. Okay, so may, again, maybe not a great uh, Spanish accent, but this was the first time meeting this repairman and he wanted to hustle for cash with no receipt. And my wife asked like, do we get the same guarantee that we would if we bought it through the insurance? And he was not very receptive to that. He didn't say it, but I could see. Now back to Jose Ramon. He says, yes, I remember the Seat you, uh, you had. I used to sell those in blue. Bang! He had just made me think, wow, this guy has been here for 20 years or more. He knows his cars, he knows the dimensions, and he must be good if he's here this long selling the same brand. So here's the first lesson for today. Be authentic, think long-term. Don't try to go for that quick cash grab. Now let's go back to Jose Ramon for our second lesson. So we sat down at the table and started to talk numbers. Now remember we had the figure of 14 and a half thousand in our head. As we added a few little extra things to the cars, the numbers kept going up and up and up. From a car that was advertised as just over 14,000 euros, we were up to 23,000 euros. I was like, <laughs> but all throughout, Jose Ramon kept saying, ah, don't worry, don't worry. In his Spanish Italian accent, he explained he had some discounts. In a nutshell, there was a discount for financing it, for trading in our little set, for it being a sunny day. Uh, he had a deal from the dealership. Then just as we thought he was done, there was one more discount and that was his personal discount. So the car price went from around 23,000 to just over 18,000. Not a bad discount, but still a lot more than 14 and a half thousand. So here's the second lesson for today. Add value to your offer. Now, honestly, I was sold as soon as I saw that there was a digital cockpit, which is basically an extra screen and more buttons. And then when he said you could talk to the car, I could see myself as Michael Hasselhoff. You remember, right? Hey kid, bring the car around. But unfortunately, it won't do that. <laughs> now, then when you build up the value, you offer a discount. You know, we all know this is a game, but I felt like heck. I got a good bargain when I was coming out of there. In fact, I felt kind of like that I was nearly getting it too cheap. Now we have friends here who said, eh, you are a little bit loco, you need to shop around. And they also are Italian friends who just happen to live here. <laughs> but the dealership is a 10 minute walk from our apartment. So if we need anything, it's convenient. Honestly, I don't have the time to ring around five other dealerships and start bargaining. But the most important reason, well, guess what? I really liked Jose Ramon and I felt, you know, I can't do this to him. I mean, like we're buddies, we're like amigos, we're like friends. You've invested like a couple of hours with us. I, 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 can't, I can't go anywhere else. I like this guy. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little bit emotional there because well, we really connected. <laughs> now, you see how a good salesman he was. Oh, I think I'm feeling a bit flush there thinking about, about going, going behind Jose Ramon's back. But you see how good a salesman he was. Oh, and as an aside, we went back a week later to talk a little bit more. And he had a very special offer on the lot that he had to get rid of it. A real souped up little number. Vroom, vroom. Yes, I like those souped up cars. I know, I know. But I said, Jose Ramon, as my amigo, which one is better? And I also had that accent. He said to me, Amigo, it depends. Neither is better or worse. It depends on your needs. And I went, boom, another great technique. Feel as if you're not being sold to. Feel that he cares. Feel that he's looking out for you. So you see the difference between the repairman who went in for the short-term hustle and wanted to get some cash quickly, no questions asked, or Jose Ramon, who said, well, these guys are coming in here and if they're happy with the service, they'll probably come back. So you see, you gotta think long-term. You gotta think value. You gotta think about building up the relationship because then 
people gravitate towards you. And if you're ever in Barcelona and you want to buy a car, well, I'll bring you to Jose Ramon. Whereas with the repairman, well, I'm not going to recommend him or speak well of him because he did kind of try to hustle us a little bit. So let's round up this video. So be authentic in your presentation and in your sales presentations and how you pitch to people. Because remember, we're always selling something. We're selling ourselves, we're selling our products, our services. Don't go for the quick buck. Think long-term value. So show your knowledge and authority in your subject area. Jose Ramon didn't need to look up and see you know, well, let me check the dimensions of that car. I'm not quite sure. He was he was interested. He was interested in selling the car. He was interested in getting to know us. He was interested in building a relationship because he knows that he is a local showroom. Well, they're part of Volkswagen, which obviously is huge, but they are a local neighborhood showroom. And if we have a good experience, we're going to tell others. And also remember to stack value first and then price is not important like he talked to us a little bit he let me sit in the car he let me press the buttons he showed me that i can go hola hola and then i can speak to the car and the car will respond to my voice commands Check, talk how to me. cool is that <laughs> and he had sold me on that he had sold me on the value he told us about the safety features etc and it's not that we would have paid forty thousand euros for this car we had our budget but we were willing to stretch a little bit more because of the value that he told us about. And probably the most important thing is people buy from people. You know, as I said, Jose Ramon, he gave us time. He sent us emails. We went back to him three times. We took the car for a test drive. We were out for at least 40 minutes doing the test drive. He was just a nice guy. So people buy from people. That is the key. You are selling to people. So we've come to the end of uh, the video, but I just have one more thing to say to you. Psst. You want to buy some cheap credits from PLO.me? Uh, I, I got them cheap, you know what I mean? They fell off the back of a truck and, you know, I'll get you a very special deal. No, no, don't take me away! <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try and, you know, say to somebody, hey, I'll get you some cheap credits. Just don't say anything, just send me some cash because why would I do that? Why would I ruin my reputation by doing something like that? So don't even consider doing anything like that in your business, i.e. don't go to a client and say to them, look, I can put on this event for you. It's uh, $2,500, but if you pay cash, I can do it for 18. Now guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure that you like and subscribe and ask me any questions, sing my praises. And of course, if you're not a member yet, simply go to plr.me and sign up and get two free credits each and every month. No strings attached, no dodgy East London voices, no dodgy Spanish slash Italian voices, just honest to goodness credits that can help you get more and more authority in your niche. Hey guys, well, I had lots of fun with that video. I hope you enjoyed it too. And I hope you enjoyed my accents and my wardrobe change. Now, here's two other great videos I think you will really like. I'll see you next time.